a spiritual food. Hello. This is talking about a spiritual adultery. It's not actually talking about a physical. Although Jezebel does use the physical to seduce, this is more talking about a spiritual adultery. That means, like I said a while ago, we go into the church and we take them from their faith in Christ alone. He's the fullness of the Godhead bodily, it says in Colossians, don't it? Yep. He's the fullness. He's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. That's what it says in Peter. You know, first Peter? He's given us those things. Yet, the Jezebel spirit says, oh no, we got to go one step further. That's exactly what the Gnostics did. They say you're saved by supernatural knowledge. They were saying the more you increase in knowledge, that's not it. Knowledge helps us. And believe me, it helps us in the church to stand. But we're saved by Jesus, y'all. Amen. Amen. I mean, there's people that on their deathbed that come to the Lord Jesus never had knowledge of biblical things in their life. But the gospel is preached. And they call out to the Lord. They're saved. Amen. That's not true. The Gnostics are wrong. And there's still a little Gnosticism going on now. It's, it's usually caught up in the Word of Faith movement, but it's also going and it's, it's kind of snaking its way in all kinds of different denominations. I've talked to people in churches, I mean just Baptist churches, you think would be a pretty safe place to go instead of getting weird and spooky as far as spiritual. Oh no, they deep off in it too. The same stuff that comes off the TV is the same stuff they're preaching in there. I'm like, in a Baptist church? I thought y'all didn't believe in the spiritual stuff. <laughs> believe me, it depends on who the minister is. And it depends on what leaven that they're letting in their ear. You'd be surprised... See, I get to go in the houses. You'd be surprised at the books people read. <laughs> I didn't used to pay attention to books, but now I'm spread. I'm looking at books. Woo! Oh, I see. <laughs> and you can see them books on there, and that's what they're feeding them. Amen. That's right. What did Jezebel like to do? Seduce the service of God. To feed on what? Mm -mm. Things sacrificed to idols. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what these books are doing. We spiritually feed through our eyes and our ears what we listen to and what we read. And many people have fed on things that are unclean. And this spirit is saying, yes, this is clean. Yes, this is of God. And the whole time it's taking you further and further and further away from the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's that simple. I've known people that could not receive prayer or healing in the hospital because of the leaven inside their mind tells them that they've got to do some works to please God before they can even go to church again. Mm -hmm. yeah. i got to clean myself up. How are you going to clean yourself up? Amen. That's right. Amen. When we was a baby in diapers, could we clean ourselves up? No. Nope. I haven't seen too many babies do it. <laughs> Not yet. I mean, I don't know what's, what's going to happen in the future, but I've never seen too many babies just take that diaper off, clean himself up, and say, okay, I'm ready for another one. <laughs> it usually takes mom or daddy, don't it? Mm -hmm. It takes the Holy Spirit to clean us up. Amen. Amen. I told you before, I've heard people saying, I'm keeping myself under holiness. And it sounds correct, and they try to back it up with Scripture, but you can't keep yourself. The only one that can keep you and show you what true holiness is, is the Holy Spirit. And there's so many people that's got Jezebel teaching in the church that they don't even speak of the Holy Spirit. Did y'all know that? There are churches that don't even know what the Holy Spirit is. They say, who is the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, I'm not kidding you. Got family members that have been in them all their life. They don't even know nothing about the Holy Spirit. They don't. And it's sad. But we need that teacher. We, we need him to help us discern the good and the bad. Because that tree of the knowledge of good and evil is very, very cunning and crafty. And it's just twisted. And something that looks good to our religious flesh is not good many times. Amen. It don't matter if it's got scripture behind it. They'll use scripture in some of these programs to try to say, this is what Jesus said to do. And, well, then it's right and per proper. Yeah, but they're telling you to do it for deliverance. And that fasting's right and proper in its place, isn't it? Right. There's nothing wrong with fasting. We need to fast. I'm not saying that all of them commanded to fast or nothing. <laughs> but we do need to fast. I mean, that's between us and the Lord. That's personal between you and the Lord. And it's good and it's right and it's proper, but you cannot fast for deliverance. Right. Right. Because then your faith is put in what? Your holy word. 
this is another, another process that Jezebel has got many people by reading books. We talked a little bit about this morning. Yeah. She loves to do this. Well, what's going to happen to her? And are we supposed to tolerate her? When we recognize this, we're not supposed to tolerate this spirit in the church. We're supposed to say, this is wrong. Nope. We go to the Word of God because they are sitting there tolerating this. Well, Jesus wouldn't get mad, would he? He don't really get upset about those things. Right? Yeah. Well, watch this. And 21, I gave her space. See, this is mercy right here. He gave her time. He's given this spirit that's sitting in the church teaching, and, and they know it. I've given her space to repent for her fornication. That means he's revealed it to her. She's got understanding that she's wrong in many areas. But the pride, that spirit of pride, remember that other spirit in Leviathan? The, his generals? It won't let her repent from it. Oh my goodness, y'all hear this? These are all intertwined together. I want to tell you something. Many people want deliverance for some of these spirits because they're they're negative supposedly in their in their life. Like I don't want an infirmity. I, mean, I sure don't want this uh, this spirit of fear because it limits me. Can you please get these influences out of me? I'm gonna pray over them, but I won't. Because <coughs> Jezebel makes me feel like I'm a little bit powerful. And I got authority over folks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And they and they say, Come, pray for me. I want this influence out of me, but I want to keep that hold on to one of them. You can't hold on to one of them. Nope. Because they're intertwined. Remember, remember Job 41? Yep. How you can't even get between them? If you're holding on to one, you got them all there. Amen. That's the reason why many people are not delivered like they should be. Because they're trying to hold on to these influences because the devil lied to them and whispered in the ear and said, I'm giving you power and authority over people. And you feel like Nimrod on top of that tower. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's many, many leaders in the church that got the same problem, y'all. I promise you. He has to break me down and make sure and clean me up, make sure I don't have none of that mess in me. Because when, when you get to be a leader or something and, and people start flattering you or whatever, you can get puffed up. Y'all ever seen a leader get puffed up? It's not a pretty sight. Mm -hmm. I watched one by the Holy Spirit showed it to me and he showed me like a big old balloon. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it just popped. That's the spirit or the head of somebody who's being puffed up by the congregation. I mean, it just kills them. Because pride cometh before the fall. Amen. Amen. That's one of those tricks and the snares of the enemy. So it says in Psalm 91 that he'll keep us from the snare, right? Yeah. How's he keeping us from the snare? He's showing us. He's showing us their tricks. I want to know. Don't y'all want to know? Because when he raises you up and he places this calling on your life, to do what he's called you to do in this end time church, we don't want to get puffed up. Because you're liable to see some things that the church hadn't seen in 2,000 years, y'all. I'm serious. You might see somebody raised up from the dead. You don't know. Man, we're coming to the end of this road here. Believe me, there's a harvest of souls need to be saved, and that same anointing that was on them apostles is going to be on the church again. It should be now, but we're not walking in what we should be walking in. We get mercy drops. We've been walking in mercy drops. Hit and miss it. But boy, I'm telling you, in the early church, when you read the account of what happened there, it's amazing. I mean, Peter's shadow. Not him looking back at it, but just walking by. People were healed. He could have got puffed up, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. If he hadn't been sifted, he'd have sure got puffed. Well, my shadow heals people. 